With every weapon being unique and having their own learning curve, it can be really tough to feel comfortable on all of them. So to give you a boost, today we're gonna cover tips for every weapon, with each of them giving you an edge in the game. What's up guys, it's Valued, and by the end of this video, you will better understand how to abuse each weapon no matter how comfortable you feel on it right now. Starting off with one of my favorites, the R301 Carbine is one of the most consistent guns in the game. All it really needs to be a top tier weapon is a mag, and you can one clip enemies with ease with this high accuracy weapon. Don't get too carried away up close with this guy as the damage numbers could be a bit low. But if you can land most of your shots at medium range, which is pretty easy to do, you're gonna be frying. If you get an R301 with a purple mag and a 2X, the rest of the lobby better be on high alert. If you're a player who struggles with the recoil on some guns or you're looking for a consistent primary, the carbine has got you covered. Two other weapons that are really strong with a good mag are the R99 and the Car SMG. With how fast their fire rates are, they can feel pretty underwhelming without a decent mag. But even then, the recoil can be pretty tough to get used to. If you can learn to control these two weapons recoil without needing a stabilizer, you're gonna be a menace at close range with these weapons outputting some of the highest damage in the game. That being said, make sure to prioritize that barrel stabilizer and mag because even if you're incredible with the recoil, not having one really does limit the range these guys can be effective at. And speaking of close range power, the Prowler may just be the top dog in the right hands. The five round burst can be a bit tough to use at range, but up close, this gun absolutely melts. I really like to hit fire a lot with this weapon as it keeps the recoil of that big burst from messing me up. You can also jiggle peek corners really well with this gun, starting the burst right before you round the corner to make sure you're getting damage instantly upon peeking. And if you're a controller player, this may be one of the best guns in the game, with aim assist helping you land the full burst on your enemies. Now, don't get me wrong, it can feel a bit odd to use compared to other SMGs, but man, let me tell you, the Prowler is so strong on certain legends like Bloodhound and especially if you're playing on a controller. Moving on to a couple of powerhouse weapons in this season, the Flatline and Rampage are both insanely strong, but they both suffer from some pretty tough recoil. The Rampage luckily can get a stabilizer, and I personally think this is the most important attachment for this gun by far. It just feels so much better if you can even get a white stave. And if you can find a thermite or two to charge this guy up, it will mow down everything from doors to enemy players. And as for the flatline, every player who wants to reach a high level of play should learn to control the recoil on this gun. It is actually just insane how strong this gun is without any attachments. And if you can get used to the wacky recoil and practice your jitter aiming, you can put out a ton of damage with this gun. Also, it's a lot better up close than most ARs are, and all around, it might just be honestly the strongest gun in the game, considering how little it actually needs to be powerful. Before we move on to the rest of the weapons though, I wanted to let those of you guys who play Halo know that we just launched a bootcamp featuring one of the best players in the game, Snipedown. I'm Eric Rona, but you all probably know me as Snipedown, and welcome to my brand new Halo bootcamp. This is an immersive learning experience designed to unlock your true potential in Halo. Whether you are brand new to the Halo franchise or pushing the top of Onyx, you are going to be the one consistently carrying your lobbies. So back to the weapons, two more versatile and powerful weapons are the L-Star and the Volt. Both of these weapons are really powerful at close range and with the lack of bullet drag on energy ammo, they're quite accurate at range as well. I recommend using these weapons as secondaries most of the time as the damage at range can be a bit low, especially with the L-Star nerfs. Keep in mind, the L-Star has a small window when it starts shooting where it's really inaccurate before it settles into place. So don't be afraid to start shooting this weapon earlier than you normally would and adjust your aim as it makes its way through this window. I see a lot of players try to line up their shots just to have the wind up make them miss most of them anyway. If you plan on shooting someone, try shooting as you're ADSing and dialing in your aim on the target. It'll have you doing a lot more damage. The triple take has been back on top of the energy weapons this season ever since it was brought out of the care package. 
This thing is a sniper and a shoddy all in one. And while you shouldn't make it your primary close range weapon, it is a great secondary due to the flexibility. At long ranges, make sure you're letting the choke pull the burst together so you can get an accurate shot, but at close ranges, don't be afraid to fire a bit earlier for the spread shot. While you shouldn't always do this, I have seen a lot of players miss out on kills because they're trying to let the choke fully charge on every shot. If someone's low or within medium range, don't miss shots just because you're going for those massive damage charges every time. A bit of damage is better than none, and it could be the difference between getting a knock and missing out on a kill. Two more mid-range options are the 30-30 repeater and the hemlock. The 30-30 is in a good spot, especially with the scout being in the care package. But the biggest mistake I see players make with this gun is rushing their shots. This isn't the scout where you can just spam shots and have the ammo to make up for it. This gun requires a bit more precision to get the most out of its damage and low fire rate. Another tip for this gun, don't sleep on shatter caps. While it isn't something you should use later into the game, finding shatter caps early on it can turn this thing into a pretty powerful shotgun, making it great in those scrappy, low armor fights early on. As for the hemlock, don't be afraid to throw this gun into single fire mode. If you have a good trigger finger, you can deal a ton of damage this way while having a lot more accuracy. You can also get away with the burst mode when you have a good stabilizer on this gun. But before that, the burst could be a bit tough to handle at longer ranges. Not to mention, the iron sights on this gun aren't very good, which can make it even tougher to use at medium to long range until you have a 2x or a 3x. While on the topic of medium range, we can't forget about cosplaying as an Amazon warrior with the bow check. This thing can be tough to hit shots with for a lot of players, so I'll give two pieces of advice for this. Get a good sight and lead your shots. Using the sight that best suits the range you're using this weapon is really important. I find it super tough to use at longer ranges when it has a 1x or another magnitude. Instead, throwing a 2 or 3x on there makes your life a lot easier. And while taking these shots depending on your range lead this thing more than you do with a lot of other weapons. Remember, these are arrows you're flinging here, not bullets, so give them some more time to reach their target. Now, let's talk snipers. We'll save the Kraber until we talk about care package weapons, but the charge rifle, longbow, and sentinel are no slouches. The charge rifle has no bullet drop and requires a lot of tracking to get the max damage. While it isn't the highest damage of the three, it probably is the easiest to use, and it can do partial damage even if you don't manage to get a full hit. This makes it really good at charging evo shields mid to late game, giving you a way to farm damage from really safe distances. The longbow is the only semi-auto sniper you can grab off the ground. And while it has good damage, it can be really tough to hit shots, especially without a stabilizer. I would recommend using it with a less magnified scope than the other snipers and look to take a bit closer shots than you traditionally do with other snipers. By no means should you be engaging in a close range fight with it, but I think it really shines when you're using it at ranges that work well with things like a 3x or a 2-4 sight. So the trick to this gun is practice getting used to the bullet drop, and if you become a laser with it, you will be dealing a ton of damage. And for the Sentinel, I really like to use this gun as a leading shot to chunk an enemy, and then immediately swap to look for the down. Obviously, you should look to use this weapon at longer ranges like the sniper it is, but if you get good at hitting quick snapshots with it, you can really deal some damage at the beginning of a fight. It's great if you charge it up with some cells, just make sure you aren't trying too hard to pull this off and running through your heals or getting caught during its really long animation. Next up, everyone's favorite hand cannon, the Wingman. This is one of the highest skill ceiling weapons in the game, and if you can hit consistent shots, it deals insane damage. But this is where a lot of players struggle because the thing really isn't that easy to use. My biggest advice would be to avoid throwing any magnified scopes on it and to focus on flick aiming your targets. This means flicking your aim onto the target between shots, and once you get good at it, you can perfectly time this with the fire rate of the wingman. Rather than trying to track enemies the entire time you're shooting, flicking like this on every shot gives you sort of a tempo to the weapon and allows you to see enemy movement clearly between shots and then react. And with Apex lowering your movement speed when you take damage, focus on hitting that first shot. If you can hit the first shot and follow up with shots during the lower movement speed window, it will make your accuracy on the gun way higher. Moving into some of the shotguns, let's talk about the EVA 8 and the Mastiff. 
Both of these shotties have a large pellet spread, with the EVA 8 being in a clump and the Mastiff being in a horizontal line. The EVA's pattern lends really well to hitting enemy center mass when they're in the open. If you miss a section of your pellets, the damage will really suffer, so do the best to bait enemies into the open or fully push them when looking to use this gun. The Mastiff's horizontal spread makes it really good for peeking head glitches. Whether that's a wall you're hiding behind or a friendly knockdown shield, crouching and then springing up with a shot and instantly recrouching behind cover allows you to pump damage without putting yourself in too much danger. Due to this bullet spread, you should also look to aim shoulder level with this shoddy to give yourself as much enemy hitbox to land those pellets. The Peacekeeper and Mozambique are a bit different. The Peacekeeper's hipfire should be treated like the EVA 8, where you're aiming towards center mass to get the most out of the pellet spread. But when it's choked, the range drastically increases, letting you hit some very accurate shots at decent range. My biggest tip here is to not get obsessed with over choking this thing all the time. While it's great to choke when you get the chance, a lot of players struggle with hitting shots because they're tightening the spread. But if you think an enemy is going to wide peek you, choke it up a bit to tighten the spread and don't be delaying your shots, waiting for that fully charged shot. And for the Mozam, this thing is surprisingly long range. It hasn't been called the sniper shoddy for nothing, and if you're accurate with it, it can actually deal some solid damage. While I wouldn't look to hold this thing late game, practice using it almost like you would with a wingman up close and you'll have a much easier time getting some downs than you might think. And for the last of our energy weapons, we have the Havoc and the Devotion. Both of these guns deal really good damage, but their wind-up times throw a lot of players for a loop. Getting your hands on a turbocharger is definitely the way to go if you're running these guns. But getting used to the wind-up so you can use these weapons off drop can also be huge. These guns will down an enemy with white armor so fast, so you don't want to pass them up when you need a weapon just because you don't have a turbo. Get used to heavily pre-firing in situations, so by the time anyone's in your line of sight, you're already wound up and ready to shred. And if you find a player late game that you kill with a fully kitted Havoc or Devotion late game, don't be afraid to swap over if you have enough ammo and a turbocharger. They are really strong, but it can be tough to get all the attachments they need to be that strong. Two other weapons you want to get used to using off drop are the RE45 and the P2020. Believe it or not, these guns actually do a ton of work off drop, especially if they have a mag. My favorite way to use these guns are in a pinch off drop, and to gather light attachments for when I finally come across an R301, Car SMG, or R99. These ones make great as I would call them bridge weapons into their more powerful weapons while still being able to hold their own if you're comfortable on them. And finally, we have the care package weapons. All of these guns should be picked up if you come across them, as they're the strongest weapons in the game. Most of them are pretty self-explanatory, but I want to give a couple tips. For the scout right now, take that thing out of double tap mode. The dual shot makes it hard to hit both shots, and you're better off in single fire most of the time, unless the enemy is super close. And the other tip that I commonly see a lot of players not using is to conserve your ammo on these guns, but especially with the Spitfire. Since you tend to use this gun at longer ranges, it's easy to get carried away throwing shots down at enemies constantly. Instead, conserve your ammo for situations where you know you can hit a good number of shots and use your other weapon that you can replenish ammo to take those long range fights. Alrighty guys, I wanna hear in the comments down below what your favorite weapon is and why. Anyway guys, as always, it's been your boy Valued and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.